Uh, okay, dear. I'll stop by the store on the way home and pick these things up. Bye. I wish you wouldn't ask me to stop by the supermarket. I get the feeling they don't care whether I shop there or not. And half the time, the employees don't even notice me. And if one ever indicated they appreciate my business, I'd fall over. Publix. This is where my wife said to go. Don't know why she shops here, but she said not to go anywhere else. Where shopping is a pleasure, I bet. Oh, I'm going to have to get a check cashed. I bet this is going to be one more hassle. Probably won't even get anybody to notice that I'm here. Hello, how are you? Can I help you with something? I don't suppose I can get a check cash. I'll bet you can. Do you have a public check cashing card? I believe my wife put mine in the checkbook. Here. Then you have no problem at all, sir. Just step over here and we'll take care of you. Twenty, forty, and fifty. Thank you, Mr. Price, and you have a good evening. Well, she was friendly enough. Probably the only one in the store that is. Thank you. I wonder what that was for. Let's see, I guess this is where I pick up that special meat you needed for the kids' lunches tomorrow. This ought to be a lot of fun. Most of the time, these people seem to be in another world. Hello, how are you this evening? How may I help you? I don't suppose I could get just a quarter pound of that special loaf sliced thin? You sure can. Won't take but just a moment. Now, will there be anything else? No, that's all. Okay, there you go. And thank you, and you have a good evening. This must be some kind of special night. That's two in a row. Oh, I hate to pick out cuts of meat. There's so much I don't know about them, and so many different types. Good evening, sir. Can I help you with your selection? Well, yes. My wife was not happy with the selection I made last time. Is that right? Well, let's see if we can make a few good points for you. Uh, how are you planning on cooking the steak, do you know? I think she's got plans for me to cook it on the grill. Is that right? Well, you probably want a thicker one then. Let's see here. There's a nice pretty one. That looks pretty good. Do you think it's lean enough? Yeah, it's lean and it's also got good marbling in it, which would be good for the flavor. But if you don't like that one, we'd be glad to cut you a special one. No, this looks like what I need, but I appreciate the offer. Yes, sir. Anything, anytime you need any help, just holler at us. We'll be glad to help you. I'll sure do that. I appreciate your offer. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your meal. That's the fourth one. Oh, no. All their produce is already wrapped, and she only wanted two potatoes for baking. Well, there probably won't be anyone here. And if there is, they'll probably think I'm some kind of jerk for wanting just two potatoes. Hi, sir. May I help you with something? Well... I only wanted two potatoes for baking, but if I have to take this package of four, I will. No, sir. If you only want two potatoes, that's what I'd like you to have, and it'll just take a moment to bag you up, too. Here you are, sir. Will there be anything else I can get for you? No, that's all I have on my list for now. Well, thank you, and have a nice evening. Come back and see us. They must be having some kind of a contest to see who can be the nicest. I bet this can't last. They probably don't have these rolls. Maybe I'd be better off to go over to the bread aisle and pick out something. Hello, sir. How may I help you? 
You probably don't have water rolls, do you? Yes, sir, we sure do. How many would you like? My wife asked me to get four, but if I have to take more, I will. No problem. I can get you as many as you want. Well, let me have four. She'll be shopping tomorrow for the rest of the week. Okay. Here you are, sir. Now, how about a Danish for tomorrow morning? That sounds pretty good. Do you have pineapple? Yes, sir, right here. Okay, I'll take this one. Here you go. Thank you very much, and you have a good evening. Well, here comes a moment of truth. The meat will probably go bad before I get through one of those checkout counters. All those cashiers are probably busy telling those bag boys about their big date last night. Hello, sir. If you're ready to check out, I'll be more than happy to take you right here. That's nice. I thought I'd be waiting in line. Well, we're usually a lot busier, but we try to keep things moving up here. How are you, sir? Looks like you're going to have a nice steak for dinner this evening. Yes, my wife has a plan that I'll do the cooking. Well, it sure does look good. I don't see any charcoal. You have plenty at home? I have a gas grill, but thanks for asking. Just want to make sure we had everything. Here's your stamps and receipts, sir. Thank you, and have a nice evening. Okay, we're ready to go. I believe I can take that. That's okay. I'll get it for you. Okay, you're all packed and ready to go. Thank you, and have a good evening. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you handling that for me. That sounds pretty good. Maybe it's contagious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
That type of humor has been around for years. We're still laughing at reruns of old movies like the Keystone Cops and Laurel and Hardy. Even one of our major yogurt manufacturers is using that type of humor in their commercials today. The type of humor is funny when it's on stage or television, but how about in real life? Unfortunately, the situations you just saw closely parallel accidents that occur in publics every day. The difference is these accidents that you just saw were staged. In our store, they're not. The accidents that occur in our stores cause our customers a lot of pain and suffering. In addition to that, there's a lot of expense involved in slips and falls. In one year alone, Publix paid out over $2 million for better than 1,200 accidents. That's an average of $1,800 per accident. Now, what can we do to keep these type things from happening? It has been said that there's no such thing as an accident. People are injured because of unsafe acts or unsafe conditions. Let's take a look at some real live situations and see what we can do to cut down on the number of slips and falls that occur in our stores. If we can clear up some of the unsafe conditions that exist in our stores today, we can greatly reduce the amount of pain and suffering that our customers experience. Equally important, we can cut down on the cost of doing business. Whenever you're stocking during the hours that your store is open for business, be sure to keep boxes and trash out of the way of your customers. We all want to be friendly and sociable with our fellow employees, but it's more important that we pick the proper place and time. Whenever you are pushing a stock float on the sales floor, it is important that you look where you're going. It's also important that the float be loaded properly so that you can see over the stock that is on the float. Even though it is not always convenient to stop and pick things up right away, it is something that must be done. It takes a lot less time to pick things up than it does to fill out an accident report. Whenever an unsafe condition exists, never leave it unattended while you go for cleanup material. The very accident you were trying to prevent just might happen while you're gone. Always get another employee to stand guard while you're gone. If no one is available, then be sure to put something over or around the spill or broken product. Several years ago, we had an emphasis program. Don't pass it up, pick it up. That was not a one-year project. It is as true today as it ever was. Every employee in the store must be constantly on the lookout for unsafe conditions no matter where they happen or when. Safety is everyone's job. Water on the floor is one of the greatest hazards that exist in our stores today. You should never leave a wet spot where you've been working. Again, be sure to leave the area guarded, either by another employee or make sure it's blocked off. Also, when drying up an area, be sure it is completely dry before you leave. There are already enough unsafe conditions around us today without us setting a trap for our fellow man. Using common sense will go a long way toward solving problems. Always look before you come through a door, especially onto the sales floor. Also be aware of the fact that a small child might be in front of the door. Never rush out a door. If you don't hit someone with the door, you might have to make a sudden stop and the product you're carrying might fall off. Remember, safety is everyone's job. Always be on the lookout for unsafe acts or conditions that might exist in your store. Pick up anything that you see that might cause an accident. Be on the lookout for wet spots that might cause a slip or a fall. Remember, wet spots should never be left unattended. 
If you cannot find an employee to stand guard while you go for cleanup material, then be sure to barricade it. Also remember that wet spots must be dried completely before you leave them. Above all else, remember, don't pass it up, pick it up.